Control, five minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Georgia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My amendment prohibits funds from being used to remove any monument on land under the jurisdiction of the Department of Interior. For too long, communist Democrats have been hell-bent on erasing our culture, way of life, and our history, whether we agree with it or not. As George Orwell wrote in 1984, they want a future in which every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street and building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And that process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. And history has stopped. Nothing except exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. In 2020, nearly 168 Confederate symbols were removed across the United States, many of which were violently torn down by radical BLM Antifa activists that burned American cities to the ground. Most recently, the statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee that stood for nearly a century in Charlottesville, Virginia, was dismembered and melted down in a 2,250-degree furnace. The news media was quick to flood social media with video posts of the statue's head melting down in fire. This was the message. The communists in our country have made it clear that they will not stop with Robert E. Lee and will continue to do this until George Washington's statue is burning in fire. Whether we agree with the monuments, whether we, we agree with the history, our history are, is our lessons now for this generation and for future generations to come. Madam Speaker, I reserve. Your reserves? For what purposes does a gentlewoman from Maine seek Thank recognition? Thank you, Madam Chair. I claim time in opposition. The gentlewoman is recognized. Look, this amendment is one more controversial poison pill policy writer that sadly shows that the Republicans are not interested in bills that can gain bipartisan support and become law. The amendment would prohibit the Department of Interior from removing any monument on land under their jurisdictions. There can be many reasons a monument would need to be removed health and safety of visitors and staff. This amendment provides no latitude for the department to steward the land and resources they are responsible for. In 15 days, the government will shut down. Yet we are spending time on a bill that will never become law and on this superfluous, <laughs> superfluous uh, partisan poison pill rider. We should be focused on creating a bipartisan bill that abides by the agreement reached in the Fiscal Responsibility Act of 2023. So let's do the job we were elected to do, ensure the American people receive the benefits and services they are entitled to. I urge my colleagues to reject this amendment, and I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to yield one minute of my time to the gentleman from Louisiana, Clay Higgins. The gentleman yields time to the gentleman from Louisiana. Madam Speaker, I rise in support of this amendment, and I thank my colleague for introducing it. Madam Speaker, our history is our history, all of it. We live in an era wherein my Democrat colleagues across the aisle seem to be, fail to recognize the simple fact that you're rewriting history, you're rewriting history of, of this body and American people have lost all trust in any kind of sanity coming out of my Democrat colleagues. You're moving from sea to shining sea, taking down statues. How's that working? How's that going, Madam Speaker? Do we have peace in our time? Is our border okay? Is the world not on fire? You have more or less racial problems in America today than you did 20 years ago. It's insane, again, what my Democrat colleagues push the yeah, Confederate time soldiers expired. buried in Arlington. Shall you remove their bones? The gentleman's I time is expired. I support the amendment, Madam Speaker. I yield. The gentleman yields. The gentlewoman from Georgia. M Madam Speaker, I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. I reserve. The gentleman from Maine reserves. 
Madam Speaker, I'd like to yield one minute of my time to, to the gentleman. Uh, the gentlewoman who yields time to yes. the gentleman from Montana. Yes, Congressman, Congressman Mr. Zinke. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I, my friend and gentlewoman from Maine may have mentioned that this affects all monuments. In fact, it does not. As a former secretary, monuments are under the Antiquities Act. There's about 163, as I recall. Uh, this only pertains to monuments that commemorate the founding fathers of the United States on land under the jurisdiction. I don't recall how many monuments are to the founding fathers, but there's not many. I don't recall any being a safety issue. Matter of fact, I recall all of them being a part of our history and an important part of our history for all to learn. So this does not affect all monuments, nor the safety. What it affects is the, is the very essence of the country. I support this amendment. The from Maine. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate the thoughts of the former Secretary of Interior, and I thank you for your service. Um, but I want to be clear. Uh, let me read this back to you. There may have been an earlier version of this, but this one says, none of the funds made available by this act may be used to remove any monument on land under the jurisdiction of the Department of Interior. I reserve. Gentlemen, from Georgia has one minute remaining. Madam Speaker, thank you. Actually, there should be no funds allocated to remove any monument, and there's no necessary reason to remove the monuments. This is the Democrat and the Biden administration's effort to erase our history, just as they have done to the statue of Robert E. Lee. This is an outrage. This is exactly what they do in communist countries. And the Democrats want to accuse us of book burning while we try to get pornography books out of our children's schools. The Democrats will do nothing to stop their attempts to destroy our nation's history, and we must protect it. I urge my colleagues to vote for my amendment, and I urge its passage. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield. The gentlewoman from Georgia yields. The gentlewoman from Maine. So just to clear up a couple of things, my colleague mentioned the Founding Fathers. Robert E. Lee was not actually one of the Founding Fathers. He was a general of the Confederacy. That was the city of Charlottesville. That wasn't a national monument That when that statue was removed. And I, I just have to say, uh, I find it rich that the party that has supported book banning in our libraries, um, rewriting curriculum, not talking about our history over and over again, is the very one that is saying that we have to often keep painful monuments in places where they do damage, where they interfere with people's ability to enjoy the particular area that they're in and leave it to the Department of Interior to have that discretion. So if we're gonna get into talking about book banning and rewriting history, let, let's have an honest debate about it and talk about the differences between our two parties on this. I oppose this amendment and I yield back. Gentleman from Maine yields. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Georgia. Those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have recorded it. vote, Madam Chair. Pursuant to Clause 6, Rule 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentlewoman from Georgia will be postponed.